Troy Fox Babbles giving another video today. We're taking a look at another Blackburn Rovers player, There's another senior Blackburn Rovers player who has, of course, decided to say goodbye. That's right. Ryan Iambe bids farewell to Ewa Park. His contract expires at the end of the week, and there is no sign of him signing on the dotted line. We'll take a look at that and more in a minute. Of course, if you know where you've been, smash your subscribe to keep back to all things Rovers related, championship related, world football related. We got it all here, boys. And uh, what? Well, Ruski, that's right. Bye, 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 Nyambe. That's, of course, the opener for me, of course, with Nyambe. It is sad, sad times as yet. I'm going to bash this out. Another Academy Rovers, uh, Rovers Academy player is leaving, uh, of course, Ewood uh, Park for the last time. And, of course, for free. For free! That's what hurts me the most here, folks. Uh, we're losing a, a guy who's who's been uh, forever trusted up right back for the past three or four seasons now. Five even, even of course. And he's seen uh, a few faces in the dugout as well. But he's gone on to Pasture Do. Not like sure, not, as of recording, we don't actually know where he's going. But the rumours are not very exciting if you're Ryan Ayambi. We'll talk about that in a minute, of course, of course. People shout out to my VRPs there, the patrons, guys. You know who you are. But anyway, let's get into it. Of course, and take a look at him. The man, the myth, the Nyan, maybe in Cafu. That's right. Ryan Niambe will not score a goal for Batman Rovers, it appears. Unless he comes back. Unless he comes back with his tail between his legs. But I don't think it's happening. He is gone, though. That's right. He's joining Rothwell, Lennon out the door. Bradley Johnson, Jacob Davenport. The uh, It is a major, major rebuild going on at Batman Rovers. And we don't even know it. We don't, it appears that we don't even know it because we are been stagnant in the market. Not even a free transfer, not even a whiff of anything going on. So what's going on? Yeah, that's right. What are we losing uh, in, in Ryan and Ambi? And what are or what is or, or, or what are the attributes some other team are going to get? Now, the, the teams linked with Ryan and Ambi have gone big screen for this. Big screen. It's not really a step up. You know, you can look at Joe Rothwell and maybe agree that it is a bit of a step up in Bournemouth. You can look at Daryl Lennon and maybe think it's also a bit of a step up in Middlesbrough. Now, that's a contentious point. It's not necessarily agree that Middlesbrough is a step up. But I think for where they come uh, into this season, I think with Chris Wilder, with the uh, already six, eight months of, of managerialship, with Chris Wilder at the helm and his, his track record and his history in this division, they're going to be contenders for promotion. No questions about that. And whether it's automatics, playoffs, who knows. So there is a good, strong chance that Daryl Henry could be looking towards this as a final season in the championship. And, of course, maybe getting that uh, all elusive Premier League football that he's, that he's, that he's uh, uh, of course... Desired, but what about Ryan Niambi? Now there's not nothing in the news yet, or, or any bubblings going on. But th there is a strong feeling that he could be staying in the championship with the likes of get this Stoke City seem to be the ones leading the charge. West Brom again, who just pick up players left, right, and centre. Is where you go to die. It's where football careers go to. A lot of football careers end basically. Adam Reach, poor bastard, went there. Uh, Andy Carroll, goodness gracious me, they have just snapped up Swifty Boy. And Jed Wallace, both of those are going to peter out to absolutely nothing. Ryan Nambi would be the next one as well. Coventry City as well. Now, I have I have done my own predictions for the championship season. I do have Middlesbrough and West Brom doing very, very well uh, this season in my eyes. So if he was to go to West Brom, yes, it's it still feels shit because they're under a, 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 a managerial ship that's a little bit a little bit dated with Steve Bruce. Um, he will try and get results, but is he is he creating a, a bit of a mess himself by bringing all bringing a lot of faces for for a lot of uh, for for limited spaces? You know what I mean? He's bringing in Wallace and Swift. You know who's going to be arguing over the uh, the set piece? Nyambi will be joining a bandwagon of, of new faces as well, and for free. It is a talent. He is a talent, and he's going free. But yeah, Coventry City for me would be a backward step. No disrespect to Coventry. Um, I think it would be a backward step. But anyway, what are we losing in Nyambi and what are other teams gain? Let's take a look at him. Of course, this is the stats. Of course, ranked 3,000th best uh, in the world last season. Well, of course, uh, when you look at his stats and everything like that, the 119th best player in the championship. That's not too shabby. Of course, you would say uh, top 10 right back, you would imagine, with, with those sort of numbers there, 119th uh, in there. Probably much higher than top ten right back uh, amongst all, amongst all the other names because the seventh best player for Rovers last season, according to the numbers here at Team Talk, the number one 
Namibian play, of course, of course, there's no question there. 220th best right back in the world uh, and a 322nd ranked player. Born in 1997, that's, of course, what we are losing. Um, let's take a look at where he can play. Right back is, of course, his tried and trusted for Rovers. Can play at right midfield as well and debutises occasionally for Namibia at centre-back as well. Right side, centre-back, centre-back as well. Uh, of course, when you are the number one player in Namibia, you can pretty much pick wherever you want. If you want to go in goal, you can go in goal. That's right in the end. Let's take a look at him, of course, his number and things like that. Uh, he played 31 matches last season. Of course, started all 31 of them. Not not one for the substitute bench. Him. Uh, he's played on average about 81, uh, 81 minutes per game. He never made it into the team of the week. Now, in Dyer and Lennon, we did lose not only a team of the week member, but a team of the season uh, player. So that's a major, major loss at the back. And this is another major face. Nyambe Lennon, for me, last season, the past couple of seasons, would be... Uh, 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 you know, na names on the sheet. No, no, no real competition for Nyambi at right back. No real competition for Daryl Lennon when fit at centre back. So we are losing first choice members of the team here. Uh, and again, the real sucker punch, the sucker punch, the one that hurts me the most is we're losing these guys for free. Now, whether that's poor management, uh, we can talk about that. We'll talk about that at the end here because I want to, I want to kind of, that is a bone of contention for me. Uh, and it hurts. And I'm hoping we are new into a new era where shit gets done. Paperwork gets done and we don't come into a situation like this. I don't want to end up losing the likes of John Buckley for free. I don't want to end up losing the likes of Scotty Wharton for free. Uh, all these these young talents that have going to be handing the mantle in place of the, the Nyambes and the Lenahans of the world. Of course, these are, we're now uh, into a new era with some new faces, but we cannot be being mugged off left, right and centre and losing talent for this. We, if we were going to let Nyambe go, and we, if we had it, again, I've, I probably should be talking about this at the end, but if we were going to let him go, I realised that he wasn't going to sign the contract if there was no plans to up the wages. Let's go big screen on this. Well, if there was, if there's no plans to up the wages to 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 at least compete with what uh, Nyambe wants, what his agent wants, whatever. Then you know, 18 months ago, we thought we should have sold him. We should have bloody sold him. We should sign these players up for three or four years, get two years in, reconvene. If they're not willing to sign at the two-year point, then you should fuck them off and sell the bastards because we. Should should not be being mugged off left, right and centre. And, and and that should be the case moving forward. For the, If Buckley was to sign a contract, a four-year contract, I would be able to sign a four-year contract today, two years into it, then I'd look to, to either redo the contract or sell. You either sign or you fuck off. Maybe there's a little bit of bargaining time. You give him another six months, half a season, and flog him off in January with 18 months to spare. But we, we cannot be doing the shit. If we want to be sustainable, we want to go the Brentford way and all this kind of stuff, we cannot be doing shit like this. Anyway, sorry, let's get back to the numbers again. So no goals. He's never scored a goal for us. He's never scored a goal in professional football. Apparently, Mowbray was saying he was bagging him in left, right and centre tra in training. Never seen him score. You watch him score in his debut for Coventry City. Or who were we playing on the opening day? I, I, I actually forgot. Uh, Swansea? No, we did them last season. Uh, QPR. You'll sign for QPR and he'll bang a, he'll bang a belter. Uh, 43.7 touches per game on average, uh, according to this. Uh, key passes 0.3. Uh, defending 10 clean sheets. So he's a part of a team that, of course, uh, accumulate 10 clean sheets. Some tackles numbers in there. Three yellows this season. Uh, yeah, picked up a, did he pick up a red card? I think he picked up a red card. My, my memory deceives me. Um, yeah, so, so you know what? On paper, yes. Well, well, uh, for the team, when you look at the team, it's a major loss because he is our tried and trusted right back. When you look, uh, going big picture, uh, of course, when, when you look at what's left in the right back department, that also gives me a little bit of heebie-jeebie. So for me, JDT, Greg Broughton and the gang, or whatever, the transfer team, they should be looking to get a, a new right back. First team right back. Ranky Costello, for me, is not a right back. Right wing back, whatever. He's a winger, right winger. Uh, and again, he needs to be using this preseason to say, you know what, get me in this fucking team. I'm, a, I'm I can play all sorts. I'm a bit of a utility player. I like that about you, Joe Ranka Costello. But you need to be good at one position. I don't really know what your one position is. Uh, so I don't want you to be my right back at the moment. Uh, and of course, James Brown, <laughs> feeling good. Uh, maybe, maybe this. I don't think again. If, I, if James Brown is going to be competing for that right-back spot, he needs somebody to be competing with. Pikey is not ready for it. The youngster was on, uh, on loan at file last season. Ranky Costello is not a right-back. I think he should be classed as a, as a utility midfielder, winger, wide man, whatever it is. So right now, James Brown is our right-back. 
uh, moving forward. So let's get that sorted out and add a bit of strength. I think Brett James Brown has a spot in this team next season. I just want to, uh, someone else to be competing with him. Anyway, moving forward, there he is, of course, in the thick of the action. Uh, his value, his value around about now is around about $3 million, pounds, euros, whatever you want to call it. He's up there. Uh, that's probably about right. And uh, you know what? The price for Zifuk, who came in, of course, last season on loan was around about that. That was the, the fee that was quoted for Zifuk, 3.5 million pounds. Believe it or not, that's what I would heard way back when. Uh, so it's probably about right for Ryan Iambe. Uh, is he Premier League quality? If we're going to be honest with ourselves, no, I don't think he's playing for Premier League. When you look at the standard of the Premier League, uh, you know, he is not going to be able to keep his... If he gets a Premier League move out of this, fair play to his agent, fair play to him. Um, but uh, I feel he's going to be the championship and I don't think he's going to be... Uh, I, I think he might regret this move in the grand scheme of things. I think something's bubbling here at Ewood Park and uh, unfortunately he's not going to be part of the journey. This is his heat map for, of course, the season, uh, tracking down that right-hand side, forever running... Uh, uh, you know, and again, when we look at if we if we are honest with ourselves and we look at some of the other right backs or full backs in the championship, uh, Naomi's always flattered to deceive a little bit. You know what I mean? I've always been a little bit underwhelmed uh, with the end product. Don't get me wrong. His effort is there. Well, he always tried. Well, appeared to try anyway, 100% for, for Ryan and Yambi down the right-hand side. Um, of course, what are we losing? There he is. He is a, he's a mainstay for us. Of course, been with us or broke through the team uh, in the 2016-2017 championship season. That was, the, of course, the season we went down. Unfortunately, he was part of that party. He was also part of the party that came back up, of course, uh, uh, coming into, into second spot out in League One. And, of course, been uh, forever number one at right back ever since. So, four steady seasons in the championship. He's tried and trusted. He is at a good, decent footballing level um, and some team, whether it's Stoke, Coventry, QPR, whoever, West Brom, they're going to get themselves a right back uh, of good, of, of a good, uh, of good stature, good player, uh, just lacking in those, uh, those end results. Now those end results are going to be massive. Big picture once again. So the end results are going to be massive. When we look at the likes of Pickering on the left-hand side, I think Mowbray and the team there last season brought him in for uh, the, the end product, the assists, of course. The numbers aren't been up there just yet, but he's still, the jury is out. I still think we've got a really good player in Pickering on the left-hand side. What we do need to do now is have a mirrored effect on the right-hand side, have somebody or uh, a mirrored Pickering on the right with a right foot uh, and not play, play one of these in, inside uh, full-backs, whatever, with a, a right back with a left foot sort of shit, the Ryan Giles bullshit and stuff there. We don't need to do that. We need a right back with a right peg who can cross who can shoot uh who can add to the goals we need goals to come from elsewhere we've already lost uh two seasons ago a season and a bit ago now adam armstrong a lot of goals went then we expected diaz to leave as well which of course will take away 20 25 goals a season as well so we do need to have uh more players contributing in more goals because finding those those goal scorers uh, up top scoring the goals or the 10 to 20 20 20 goals a season are rocking or shit so if we can get the right backs the left backs the 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 center backs all Chipping in with three or four goals apiece, then of course that's going to help balance their books. Anyway, that's just a little bit of what I've had to say. What about the Rover Seas Mafia? Take it with a pinch of salt. Some like, some are okay with the news. Some are, of course, a little bit pissed. But of course, here are my boys and girls with their, of course, uh, thoughts on Nyambe leaving. So Nyambe is meant to sign for Stoke City. He's leaving Rovers. It got announced this morning by Richard Sharp. Uh, is going to Stoke City much of an upgrade? Personally, I don't think so. Um, yeah, I don't think it's much of an upgrade going to Stoke. They might do better than us this season, but it's not much of an upgrade in my opinion. Is it the right move for him? Nah. Um, leaving club, is he going to be missed too much? Um, I've seen a lot of fans saying yeah, um, but personally, I think we could get someone in who will do just the job if not better as now and be he's been a good player for us don't get me wrong but he's nothing like stand out amazing in my opinion he's a good player don't get me wrong he's been our best right back for a number of seasons but we can get someone in who's probably just as good as if not better but it is sad to see him go on a free because we've had him and lenny and both academy products going on a free which is stupid because we could have got a few million for each of them players. Um, is James Brown the man to step up to be his replacement? I'm not too sure about that. Is ranking Costello? I'm not too sure about that either. I'd rather ranking Costello be pushed more upfield, if I'm honest. 
So it's up to our manager now to go in, look out for some recruitment, get a new right back in, see how it is. But yeah, it is a bit of a shame to see him go, an academy player. But it's just one of those, there's nothing you can do about it. If they want to leave, get get rid of him. Um, but you don't want any of that bad blood being around the dressing room, going into a new season, especially under a new manager. We don't want any of that. So yeah, it's just basically it. Thanks for playing for us. Um, you've been a decent servant. But yeah, if you don't want to play for us, get the fuck out. So yeah, um, see you later, Ryan. So as it seems that Ryan Nyambi's now leaving the club, obviously the guy's basically devoted his career to us. I'm pretty sure he came up from the academy and he's now, what, 23, 24, maybe 25? I I don't know how old he is, um. But with him big, coming up from the academy, he obviously has devoted his career to Rovers. So I think, to be honest, this change will go in his favour, because let's be honest, would you want to be in the same job if you could get a higher pay? We just got to look at it like that, and. Obviously, our fans love him that much. They actually made up a chant about him. So, obviously, he will be missed a lot. But I just hope that Rovers can afford to replace him, really. And finally, Ryan Nyambi. Ryan Nyambi. He drinks a vodka. He drinks a Jaeger. I'm not going to say the rest. So... Nyan, Ryan Nyambi is leaving Blackburn Rovers, making it a hat trick of quality players that are leaving Blackburn Rovers. Or, well, Daryl Lennon's left. Um, Rothwell, very close to leaving. Um, well, he's left. He's just. It's not confirmed who he's signed for yet. Um, and Nyambi is leaving. Um, so seems like Nyambi made up his mind a long time ago. Um, didn't come to pre-season, didn't meet the new manager. So it's some, something's annoyed him at Blackburn Rovers from what I, that's the way I interpret it. I don't know. Something's not right there or, or his agent has just... He's got mind control powers or something. But, you know, I mean, is it all about the money? Or is there more to it than that? I think there's more to it than that. But, um, you know. It's um, it's disappointing. It's disappointing. It's to lose Daryl Lenehan club captain, quality defender, um, to lose Joe Rothwell, who provides a lot of assists, um, not not as many goals as he should, um, but still a quality player, and Ryan Nyambi, a very good defensive defender, a good defensive right back, a very and he can play central defence, um, right side central defence very well. So always a good player to have. He plays that to a high standard. So it's very disappointing to lose those three players and get nothing in return. It's um, yeah, it's not feeling good right now. The only thing that can make me feel better is that Blackburn get some free transfers in. To make up for losing these players for nothing. They need to get some quality free transfers in. You know. Some some gems. We need the new manager to unearth some gems. To cheer us all up. Um, so um, yeah. It's a, it's a downer. Um so, a bit of a change of scenery today, but um, Ryan Nyambe has all been confirmed by 
Rich Sharp on Twitter that he shall be leaving Blackburn Rovers. Um, you know, since uh, since Mowbray came in, actually, Nyambe has been a part of this team, if not before, actually, during that relegation season under Owen Coyle. Um, you know, he's been with us for a long while and I could somewhat understand if Mowbray was still at the club, why Ryan would, ne- would leave. Um, I felt the entire time that Mowbray was in charge, he was constantly trying to undermine Ryan Nyambe and basically trying to replace him. You know, you go far as back as his first full season in charge, he brings in Paul Caddis. Absolutely crap. Ryan Nambi makes his way back into the team. Then even at times, Elliot Bennett was playing over him at right back. Joe Rankin Costello, he tried to fit him in there. And then, um, you know, even last season, bringing in Safuk on loan. When Ryan does a good job in a back four, maybe to be fair, obviously, Mulberry had gone to that back five system. Ryan isn't the best going forwards. Obviously, he never scored a goal for Rovers, which is the... You know, one big thing that I guess will be marked on his career. And to be honest, like as a professional footballer, playing professional football for a good five seasons now or so, you know, he really should have at least contributed a goal to Rovers. Like it is quite poor, to be honest. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I honestly didn't think Ryan Nambi's crossing was that bad. You know, I've seen a lot worse cross of the balls. I mean, Elliot Bennett being one. For sure, like I, I thought he was absolutely abysmal at crossing Bennett. He'd either hit the first man or he'd go out for a throw in. Either or, there was no in between with Bennett. But I feel like Mowbray instructed Ryan that whenever he got down that wing with his pure pace, pure strength, he'd always have to stop, pass it back to Buckley or Travis, whoever it may be, to whip it in for him. And by that point, it was kind of too late because the defence had already set. Whereas if he was forced into a position where he literally had to cross the ball. He usually did a good job. So I I can feel his frustration probably with the club in that regard. I do feel like he's been mistreated by Mowbray for the five years or so he's been in and around the team. Um, And like I said, obviously he's had players who Mowbray come in to try to replace him, but never has because he is a quality player. Even look at James Brown, you know, Mowbray's brought someone in there to essentially come and replace him at some point. Um, I don't think he liked him very much. And I, I did I did say on the podcast we did recently, I thought there was a good possibility he would stay just because we've got a new head coach now. And if he did fancy him, I thought he might be able to convince him to stay. You know, obviously with new ambitions. And, you know, it's Stoke, the club that is rumoured at the minute, is a, it is a very much sideways step. I know, to be honest, probably will double his wages if not triple them because we have a cap of 15 grand a week and we wouldn't offer that to Ryan I think we'd be offering him around the 10,000 mark and and so to be fair you know you're getting yourself into something at Rovers at the minute which is quite unpredictable you don't know that JDT is going to be a success like we're all hoping Um, so if you could make that sideways step to Stoke a club with a, a lot bigger budget, probably a club that has, you know, obviously more spending power than us, which, you know, usually means a better chance of getting the playoffs, then you probably will take that move. So I can't blame him. And we kind of need to, you know, reevaluate ourselves as a club, as some fans essentially, in terms of, you know, we aren't the biggest fish in this pond, unfortunately, in the championship. It's not, you know, it's not the players wanting to come to us, really. They would rather leave and go earn more money elsewhere, just like Lenny Ann's done, just like Rothwell's done, just like Nine Bay's going to do. So let's just hope we get this recruitment right because it is quite worrying now, thinking that, you know, essentially half of the first team from last season has now gone. Rothwell, Lenny Ann, Nyan Bay, Van Heck, Kadra, Diaz probably on his way out inevitably. You know that is a lot of players to recruit and not much time to do so. We probably, you know, we've got like a month, a little bit over a month possibly, to get these deals done. So before the season starts, and it's not really good viewing when you kind of think about the fact. Obviously, 
you know, the team that did so well last year, we're, we're going to lose five, six of those players. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm not saying that obviously we're going to be down there. I don't think we will. I think there's there's five teams that are definitely worse than us, being Blackpool, Wigan, Rotherham, Birmingham and Reading. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll quite easily avoid the drop. But, you know, he's got a big, JDT, he's got a big work, a big task on his hands rather and so does Greg Broughton you know in terms of essentially bringing in half of a new team whether that be through loans or whether that be through permanent signings which I'd much rather be permanent signings but we are constrained to our budget unfortunately and you know we can guarantee at least a couple of those first teamers are going to be loans just like Kadra and just like Van Eck were unfortunately so I guess time will tell, but um, I wish Ryan Nambi the best. He's been a great servant to the club. I'm going to miss his chant going around Ewood. What a great chant that was. I'm going to miss his, you know, raw pace, raw strength. And, you know, yeah, I've only got good things to say about Ryan. For a, a Stoke fan potentially watching this video, you know, he's he's a 7, 8 out of 10 every game pretty much. I, I can... Probably count on one hand how many bad games he's had for Rovers, to be honest. He's not one to really, you know, change a game, I would say, to be honest. But he gives you a 7, 8 out of 10 every game, which is probably what you want from your right back, to be honest. Someone who's steady, someone who's never going to slip up making any mistakes. And then a back four, he's a perfect right back. As a right wing back, is cause for concern just because of his offensive ability not being the best. But even as a centre-back, you know, I went to West Brom away last season and he had to come into centre-back because Ayala got injured during the warm-up. Surprise, surprise. And he absolutely pocketed Andy Carroll. He tried targeting him, being the right-back, having to move into centre-back. Tried to put Andy Carroll onto him to beat him in the air. And Ryan Nyambe was beating Andy Carroll in the air that night. And I swear to God, that was the case. So he's great in the air. He's great defensively, solid, you know, no one really beats him. And in terms of going forward, he can beat a man, he can get past a man. It's just obviously the goals are not there whatsoever. And in terms of his assists, the numbers aren't really there. But like I said, I feel like that has a lot to do with the manager not trusting him for whatever reason. So best of luck, Nyambe. Dak is now the only player at the club who is still with us from that League One season. What's well, quite depressing to think. Um, but you know, obviously it's a changing of the guard almost. Marbury is gone, and Dak is the only thing that stays on with us, I guess. And hopefully he does stick around for a good few more seasons and gives us the old times of Dak. But in terms of Ryan, best of luck, pal. And you know, hopefully when we play Stoke, you you go easy on us. What's been said on social media? Well, of course the news broke uh, uh, about last week, twenty fourth of June. Um. Yeah, uh, what have we got going on here? What are we going on? So we're going to scroll back to around about... Uh, where were we? Where, where, where am I? I've only got a few here. I've only got a few. Um, so we start with Chris Martin. Not that one, but this one. He said, day ruined, week ruined, summer ruined. In tears and it's only 8.03 a.m. The goat is dead. Long live the goat. Uh, that's right. Rosina, same sort of vibe. Woke up at 7.03. Day ruined and it's 7.07. .07. Beat Chris Martin by an hour there. Craig Latham said, would have signed ages ago if he wanted to stay. Best of luck to him. Meanwhile, Tim D D D D you, uh, said, uh, it's always disappointing to see former academy players leave, but he was a very Marmite player. Uh, of course, you loved him defensively, but hated his attacking abilities. Uh, James Marsh said, inevitable, inevitable, really. Best of luck to him. Matt Ashton said, pretty solid at this level, despite being uh, quite injury prone. Wouldn't mind here this much, but it's just inconvenient having yet another position to fill. Hope we start bringing players in pronto and AZB. B said, always sad to see an academy player leave, um, but uh, his stats, goals, assists are shocking for right back and he's injury prone. If he thinks he could do better than Blackburn by joining Stoke, good luck to him. Uh, yes. Now, my, my main takeaway here is we've lost three first team players now. 
uh, who of course would have all generated around about three to four million pounds. So I was just saying we've lost around about 15 million pounds in talent. Now the Venkis of the world, the, 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 the people in the hierarchy, in the office chairs and all that kind of stuff who get paid a bit of money for a living, they should be looking at situations like this and say this shit has to stop. Whether it is the Waggett's resp responsibility, whether it's the Mowry's responsibility, someone has to take the fall on these uh, sort of big losses of losing uh, millions of pounds worth of talent. And again, go back to the point I made earlier in the video. We should be signing up our talent, get them like the Ashley Phillips of this world. He needs to sign up. I know we think he's about to sign one or he's just signed a, a long term deal. I know the Vultures are already sniffing because they can see in this youngster, Ashley Phillips, there is a, a player in there. Now, the thing with Ashley Phillips is he could either go a little bit of two ways. I've seen it with Spurs. I've seen it with a lot of uh, big time players snapping up this younger talent at 16, 17, 18 years of age and they fall to oblivion. For example, Jack Clark, who's now uh, been banded around at QPR, he's gone to Sunderland now, of course was gobbled up for about a 10, 15 million pound fee from QPR, but he never made the grade. The same could be said for Steve Sessignon or Ryan Sessignon, Ryan Sessignon. Of course, he's kind of bought back a little bit now and kind of made himself into the first team for Spurs, but at eight, the grass is never always greener. So for the Ashley Phillips of this world, get him on a five-year deal, get him two years under his belt, three years remaining, and then look to cash in on the lad. If we're going to cash in, we've got to cash in wisely. We lost David Ryan for three million. That's a bit of a kick in the bollocks when you think he can go for 30, maybe even 40 million now. And I ain't, but I ain't talking out my arse here. I'm talking facts. He's a Spanish international. He's been up in the Premier League, got a season under his, under his belt. And of course, he'll be going for a bloody mint now. He ain't going to be looking for backup. He's going to be looking for number one jersey. We are Letting these talent go for peanuts. Shit needs to change at the top of the uh, uh, of the hierarchy here at Ewood Park, or we're going to get mugged off season in, season out. Sign the talent out for longer deals. Stick in release clauses of 50, 15, 20 million pounds if they want to come stiffing and buying them now. But of course, let's get the shit in order if we're going to change. Brought in your ear for, for this for this purpose as well. Sort the shit out. Get organising. Let's turn this club from a joke and turn up uh, back into uh, contenders once again. Whether it is on the field or of course in the uh, in the in the offices. Let's start making money out of Blackburn Rovers and not uh, not getting rinsed left, right and centre. And hopefully in the process and all this sort of scenario here, we can generate a culture of great football, attacking football, winning football and of course get the crowds back at Ewood Park uh, as well. And again, don't get me started on that. That's another uh, uh, bone of contention, the prices for the fans to come in to watch Blackburn. If we, if, if we need, if we're going to get the numbers back, we need to have a serious overview. Anyway, this is supposed to be about Nyambe, not of course the grand picture of things. Shit needs to get sorted, otherwise we're going to run into scenarios like this for Ryan Iambes, the Scotty Whartons uh, and all the other great talent that's going to come through our academy. But that is it! Make sure you drop a comment and of course like the video as well. Of course continue to follow us right here at Blackmore Overseas for more content uh, over the next few weeks and months as we get into a busy, busy old 2022. But that is it guys, I'll see you soon for the next one. Until then, we're done right now. Smash your subscribe.